And then coming back to the UK, I mean, we barely spoke, if I'm honest. We were both with friends and family and that's fine. But for me, I think, you know, I did reach out and I didn't really hear anything back. And I felt like there was no effort made. I think the doubts that I had in the villa became very apparent when we left Love Island. And I feel like it just confirmed what I was thinking. So did you hear that, guys? Literally Rosie admitting there that since she got back from the UK, she hasn't heard from Casey. In fact, she's messaged him, tried to contact him, and he's not responded. So yeah, that didn't go very well. Now, another ex-Love Islander, Cynthia, who, as you know, was also involved with Casey, spoke about him in another interview where she mentioned what it was like seeing him at the reunion. Have a look at this. Oh, well, funny. Did they? Did you have a conversation with him on that reunion no. day outside? Or was no. it just... Do you want me to be... I will be so honest with this. So me and Olivia are walking through the hallway um, to get to, like, get mic'd up. And Casey's in the hallway. He doesn't say anything to me. We barely make eye contact barely make eye contact and um so he he starts walking I start walking Olivia starts walking Olivia's next to me we're walking and she's like oh is that Casey and I'm like mm, I don't really want to I don't really she said that yeah so then she's like calling his name and he finally turns around he looks at me I was gonna keep walking and then he goes to give me a hug and he's like oh hello and it was just a really awkward hug. And then he hugs Olivia and that was it. That was the only bit of communication I had with him that day. Just a dry hello. That, that was it. Ah. Now these are two separate interviews from two separate Caseyans, let's call them that. And you can watch Cynthia's interview on Morad Morali's channel. It's a full hour, you'll find out lots of interesting things. And Rosie's one is basically, she started her own YouTube channel, and that is from the first video she's ever posted, which is a Q&A from Love Island. She covers a lot of topics, including the fact that she regrets not coupling up with Keenan. Do you wish you coupled up with Keenan? Are you going to chat to Keenan now? You should definitely slide into Keenan's DMs. Keenan, Keenan, Keenan. That's the rest of what my DMs are like. Do you regret not giving Keenan a chance? Yes, I do. There we go, I said it. I said it, I do. I do regret it very much. But you know, it's Casey who really doesn't come out well here, isn't it, guys? I mean, I understand that, you know, you can't force people to like each other. You can't force people to get together romantically. But the way he's kind of treated them by basically kind of just trying to, trying to cut off communication with them, act like he didn't know them, didn't want to know them, was never involved with them, is really quite bad. <laughs> because we all saw what we saw. We saw how entwined he got with Cynthia. We saw him, you know, fighting off Claudia to get with Rosie. And then he ends up with absolutely no one. I mean, I did say during the show, he's like, can't catch a break, Casey. But now I just think the reason Casey didn't catch a break is because Casey is his own worst enemy. And perhaps he's just in love with himself. I have no idea. Inside the villa, I obviously questioned whether it was one-sided. I did feel like a lot of the time it was me pulling Casey for a chat. And I felt like he wanted to spend more time with the boys. That was something we addressed in the villa. I kind of left it as that and I thought we'll see what it's like outside of the villa. We obviously spent a week together in South Africa after we left the villa and things were quite different then. I mean we didn't actually really spend that much time together but we had just both got our phones back. So I kind of made an excuse for it and just thought well you know he's catching up with friends and family so am I. And then coming back to the UK, I mean, we barely spoke, if I'm honest. We were both with friends and family and that's fine. But for me, I think, you know, I did reach out and I didn't really hear anything back. And I felt like there was no effort made. I think the doubts that I had in the villa became very apparent when we left Love Island. And I feel like it just confirmed what I was thinking. Anyway, if you have a bit of spare time today, it's worth you checking out these interviews. Very interesting things you find out in them. I mean, the thing I find interesting about Rosie is she admits that she didn't 
actually apply. She was approached for Love Island, and she was approached like for season seven. So she's been in the offing for a while. So they asked her for season seven, she said no, and they probably asked her for that. I assume they asked her for the following season, and she eventually gave in and got onto this season. So it's interesting how the process went, and Cynthia says she got you know picked within three weeks, whereas other people had to wait for months. So it's fascinating. Watch both interviews, you'll learn a lot, you'll find out a lot, and you also learn that you know what? A lot of them really were actually quite close friends, a lot of them actually got on quite well, and it wasn't perhaps as dramatic as it was made out to be, and that they never stopped filming. Rosie said apparently, I think Cynthia confirmed it too, they filmed 24-7, so I assume that means there's absolutely tons of footage of people doing stuff that we didn't see, that we're never going to see. And in one of the interviews, I think it was in Rosie's interview, she admits that at bedtime, yes, she did hear other couples doing stuff in bed. So there you go. And that was filmed. And someone's got footage of that. And that's really creepy. And that's the thought I'm going to leave you with. Bye.